that would be my that would that would be my um, advice. Follow the team's um, what is the word I'm looking for? I'm like totally brain fart at the moment. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> uh, it's okay. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Childish. We are back at it again with yet another episode of Educate and Dominate, that one-on-one interview series where we take some of the top names of the game and get their insights so we can bring your game to the next level. Now, this is going to be something that we've never done before. It's not just a one-on-one interview series, but now we got ourselves a two-for-people, two-for-one special. We're in it to win it. We got ourselves the top 10 guild from the Global Side, Inc. We got Grace, and we got Fake Taxi. How are we doing today? Oh. Hey. All right, all right. It's a pleasure to have you guys on board. Now, um, for those that are new to the series, uh, generally, uh, like we've done before in the past, we've we've brought on some top players on the arena side um, to talk about a variety of things to improve your guys' game. Um, But somewhere around the line, around the July-August mark, I started to bring people on board with regards to their guild, um, showcasing their guilds, um, the top guilds out there, talking a little bit about strategy. Why not, in addition to showing some of their setups that they use in the Guild Wars um, that do uh, really, really good. So what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, get into those. But before we get into that, um, I've never had uh, both of you, uh, Jimmy, or sorry, Fail, <laughs> Fake Taxi, and, and Grace on board. Uh, why don't we go ahead and start with Grace, and why don't you tell me a little bit about how you got into the video gaming world and then what brought you into Summer's War? I actually joined Summer's War when my brother actually showed me the game back in September. So he got me and my sister into the game. Um, But I didn't actually play until early last year, February. So, and then that was when um, I just got like a job and then usually I know um, job and you play Summer's War. So that was when I got a lot of time to just actually get into the game. And yeah, from then I didn't chat until I was like level 25, 30-ish or so. And that's when I came into um, Channel 120, I guess, and then just met some people and then just got into the game more. So So what, yeah. So Channel 120 was the channel that got you into it? Yeah, that's where I met Jimmy and then like the rest of other guilds of our, uh, who, were, who were in there. So that was when I started getting more social and then just met a bunch of people and asked questions and yeah that's some new friends and eventually came into inked and it's been a lot of fun since so yeah <laughs> gotcha and how about you fake taxi what's up with you uh i've always been a computer gamer i'm a pc nerd so i started out when diablo was around oh my man warcraft i never got into wow though I, I think i got tired of rpg and then i started playing league of legends and then i got tired of that and I needed something new and on the go since I started to have kids. So I found Summon Wars and played it after a month it was released and been addicted to it ever since. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what it is. I'm in that same boat with you now with the family. And uh, I'm glad that I'm in this this kind of mobile game because I really don't see how I could ever do like PC gaming. Um, all the games that I enjoy are like, you know, it takes like three hours just to um <laughs> just to do anything in it, you know, like I, I used to be a big MMORPG person too myself. So, um, but Diablo, I grew up with that Diablo, Warcraft and, and Quake and all the, uh, yeah. all the fun games back in the day, a little doom, a little doom action. Yes. Doom was one. I'm, of them I'm old for all the folks listening. I'm old. Yeah. I, I did some doom. So, but, um, you know, like, 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 uh, Grace was saying, it looks like she came on board in that channel 120 and then found you. So how did you guys, uh, come together and how did the, uh, Killed, uh, of ink got for him. Why don't we start with Grace? Um, well, I've been in a, in a lot of guilds before, <laughs> but uh, I think how ink started, I I was just friends with Jimmy, and they were in M and D Milfendelf before, mm-hmm. and Jimmy was um guild leader then, and so through just connections, I guess, um, we just decided to just create a friends guild, and that's where ink came in. And so we started that with the old Vice there from M&D as well. Uh, so it was just a bunch of friends who wanted to just have a casual guild and then kind of became more than casual, <laughs> so more casual competitive. And then we ended up being 
um, top ten, and then we ended up getting legend that one time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations! Kind of I, how, how many weeks that. was that? Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't even know. That was a couple weeks ago. Yeah, about four ago? weeks ago. Yeah, okay, about four a month. weeks. Yeah, yeah so. about a month. Yeah, yeah that so is... that was a big thing. We didn't really expect that because I know when we first started, it, that was back in like the ten versus ten, uh, twenty versus twenty thing, and we couldn't even get ten people in our first week. So we we were able to get into Guild Warrior on our second week. So we ended up, I think, ranked seventeen on our first week of Guild War in ten versus ten. Which was fun, and then um, kind of grew from there, just grabbing some friends from other guilds and seeing if they wanted to join, and then, yeah, good kind of grew from there. <laughs> good, and, and, and with regards to talking about the joining the whatnot, uh, Fake Taxi, why don't you go ahead and fill me in on, uh, as far as the people going ahead and listen, you know, a, lo- a lot of these people see, you know, Guardian 3 guilds or whatnot, um, and, and they're not really sure um, if they meet the requirements, or, you know, what what does it take to be at that level for you guys with regards to Inc.? So do you guys have some kind of requirement thing you follow, or how, how do people, you know, get in touch with that? Uh, we don't really, uh, well, first, actually, we actually look at people's ruins to see if they actually can hold in like arena conquer two status and see how they handle that type of arena. And then we, I make sure that they're compatible with our guild. Well, we're most, we're mostly casual and social, but when it comes to game, we all get our mind to it. So that's one set. The one thing we have for them is to make sure they're able to come on and do guild war. If they're not active, then we really can't take them in. That's one of the requirements. <clears throat> yeah. Gotcha. And with regards to any kind of communication aspect, is there any kind of outside programs that you guys have to utilize or, or require your members to get on board with that? Uh, yeah, we make them use line. They have to have line. Gotcha. Very cool. And then Grace, uh, if as far as um, you know, your guys' current status, like, uh, do you guys have any recruitment spots? And if so, what would be the best way for somebody to get a hold of you in the future? Um, for right now, we're actually pretty full at the moment, <laughs> but, uh, usually we're all in channel 120 and for, re- yeah, for, uh, requirements wise is just, I guess the activeness and being able to willing to progress and stuff. I don't like, we don't really have any set requirement. They just have to be active, I guess, <laughs> yeah. and being able to like communicate well. Because yeah. we find that people who can actually communicate, who are active, ask questions, and get along with our guild members, they do a lot better than if you're like G three and you don't talk yeah, <laughs> or something. I, I, don't know. I, I think I think you said it right there. The communication is just kind of crucial there. Like yeah. you guys don't have to be so so strict. Is which what I really like about you. If the communication is there, everything kind of falls yeah. in order. Like right for us, I know that you know, or, or I see a lot of guilds out there that they'll have some like big requirement as far as like the people that they fight in the guild wars, you know, like, oh, you can only fight one uh, plus three and one plus two or one plus one. And then you got other guilds that are just like, you know, focus on the green bars, work your magic, do what you can do. As long as you guys are communicating together to get the job done at the end of the day, that's really all that matters. So I like it. I like it. Yeah, yeah, that's, what, yeah that's what we all do. I pretty much just tell them attack whatever you want to attack, but all the at the end of the day, just get the win. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So let me ask you, um, Fake Taxi, why don't you go ahead and fill me in? Um, you know, when you guys came on board and started to, you know, climb your way up, you know, generally we, we, we see a lot of things that we do um, that really um, kind of sets us apart from the rest of the guilds that are coming up. So if you were to kind of um, capitalize on two to three different things, maybe, uh, or more if you have them, as far as the big, big things that you have learned along the way to help uh, your guild, you know, move on there, what would those be and why? Well, I think the three major factors is definitely communication within the guild. Um, getting to know everyone is like sort of having that friend bond. Sure. And the third one is don't be so strict. Like kind of be a, what's the word I'm looking for? Don't, don't be such, so much of a dictator telling what everybody to do. Just let them roam free and let them learn from their mistakes. Yep. Because it actually takes a loss for every like we actually lost once, and it taught everybody a lesson that every half a point or one point one percent goes a long way in a win or a loss. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. when we all learn from our mistakes. Yeah, definitely. And 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 great. Do so you have anything to add to that? Um, I think a main 
thing for me is like actually just have fun. <laughs> Sometimes we get, especially when we're in competitive and we're like in high G three, especially on like rush hours. Since we do rush on on Saturdays, is just don't forget to have fun and like. Um, sometimes we get so caught up in like, I get like in RNG or like Vioprox and you see everyone raging in guild chat and whatever. And then kind of just have to like, um, kind of go back to why are we playing, the, why are we playing this game anyway? Like it's, it's fun. And like, you just kind of take the challenge and, um, like, don't forget why you like this game. <laughs> yes. Cause I know like uh, we've had uh, several incidents where like people get so frustrated and they don't want to play the game anymore. And then kind of just need to remind them like. The Guild War is fun. Like you, you're playing with your friends, and it's like the competition can be like frustrating. Yeah, but that's part of why it can be fun because you learn from that. Like what Jimmy said, you learn from your mistakes. Like um, um, if you, you you know this team works, and then so you can just use it the next time. If this team doesn't work, then don't use that the next time. It's like you like you learn. You're like you're learning new things um, with each war that I find. Like um, and you're progressing with. Um, with everything that you do. So yeah, I think that that was the main thing for me was like have fun. And then I guess also get into that, uh, get into the habit of um, spreading out your attacks, I guess, like, like, yeah, the, the guild points matter, but also the win kind of matters more. So right. kind of that, that team mentality kind of right. works better than trying, oh yeah, I, I want to hit these G, like these plus threes because I needed a, a new uh, ifrit and whatever. So I don't know. Like having that team mentality helps a lot too, especially if you want to stay in a guild. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, yeah. I find myself more times than not like attacking some of the like ones that are not even like <laughs> a, like a rank, like a plus one or whatever, just because I know that there's so many people um, in our community that uh, have a nice, mm -hmm. well-rounded um, group of teams. I have I have certain uh, guild war offenses that are really strong, but they, they kind of cater to a variety of you know teams that I go against. I can't I can't attack everything, so yeah. I generally have to um, broaden my horizon as far as what's right. What can I can attack from the lower end because I know that uh, my members have the ability to. Um, you know, broaden their horizons in the top ranks and and do what they got to do there. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I was going to say, as far as the topic of the rush hour, you made a comment there that you guys do rush on Saturday. So I was wanting to get your opinion, uh, Fake Taxi, on this. A lot of people go back and forth about the whole, should we rush, should we not rush, do I see a benefit or not? What have you guys seen in your experience and, and what, you, what can you put out there to your viewers out there today? The only way you're going to be able to rush is if all your members are available on that certain day. Right before um, yeah. ta tally, tally's up. And if but some of your members are going to, are missing, it will, could really screw you from G3 to G1. <laughs> yeah. which, we, which we experienced during the <clears throat> holiday when we were just casually farming for fun since most of our members were on holiday break. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was so, gonna say I uh, I know that I uh, we 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 took that week off uh, Christmas week. We just we just put like a farming group up or whatever. Yeah, was, we we did that for New Year's because everybody was gonna be drunk and hangover. So we're like, you know what, everybody just farm whatever you want. Yeah. Gotcha. And so you know, finishing up the 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 comments on the the things that you guys have done to improve your guys's rank or whatnot uh, along the way. Um, like you were saying, um, there's a lot of things that that we've done as far as learning from our mistakes or whatnot. Uh. Grace, I'll start with you this time. Uh, in your personal experience with regards to this game, what are like you know one or two big things, big mistakes that you made along the way, and what did you do to you know alleviate that to, to progress yourself? <laughs> mistakes. Um, I remember struggling to make six stars at least when I was starting. Um, I would actually feed one star, like the silver star monsters, to Rainbow One <laughs> to level them up, and I was like. And someone pointed that out to me, like, why would you do that? And I'm like, I don't know, just to level them up. And then I figured <laughs> you could just level up other, like, three-star monsters, two-star monsters, and make them as fodder. And so that sped my um, six-starring, like, a lot <laughs> more. So, and that was when I didn't really talk to people in chat anyway. So that was when I got all my noob noobness kind of revealed <laughs> and also my siblings actually they would also point me out like why would you put one star runes on your monsters and like i don't know those are the runes i have so i don't know after that i was like okay i will try and talk to people more <laughs> and um and go from there gotcha and fake taxi how about you 
my I guess the biggest mistakes I learned from the game was from a leader po point of stance was don't be so much of a dictator. <laughs> yeah. um, that wasn't good, and uh, it really got on a lot of people's nerves. So I kind of just backed off and let everybody do what they casually do until they make a mistake, and then they get on their case. But ever since, I really never had to get on anybody's case for that. So I guess it worked out when I just kind of <clears throat> leaned back and relaxed a bit. Good deal. Good deal. So what we'll go ahead and do is um, uh, right after this uh, uh, rift here, whatnot, we'll go ahead and showcase the uh, – uh, the, the some of the teams that have uh, done extremely well in your category. Okay, so the first one up here we got is Corrosive. Um, yeah, I, I love this guy. I've seen him so many times in the Guardian 2 ranks. Makes me makes me cringe when I get it to, but now we're talking about the Guild Wars here. So, um, Fake Taxi, why don't you go ahead and fill me on on this particular thing, some pros and cons, and why do you feel that this is one of you guys' top guilds, uh, or top successful defenses out there? Uh, primarily, it's because of his rune setups. <clears throat> Um, he really has strong runes, but you want all the units to be synchronized with each other. The only default, default I see about this is he doesn't have a cleanse, which can be a big factor, which when you go and attack him, you expect him to have, you should expect him to have at least will runes on him if he doesn't have a cleanser in it. So be prepared for that. But it's pretty much if you don't, debuff him, you you take a big hit to your offense that you're trying to attack his defense with. Gotcha. And with regards to the um, uh, it seems like with regards to this particular team here, he's kind of going with a, a YOLO style of approach. Uh, do you feel that that's um, generally common uh, for people in your guys' top ranks or whatnot? That's kind of the way to go these days? Yeah. Uh, going to YOLO uh, offense on a defense will actually contribute to other members because you're expecting him to take out at least some of his units where he can't use into the next uh, guild match that he's going to enter. Gotcha. So it's pretty, mu pretty much contribution. What, uh, whatever enemy he could take out, will they'll suffer. Okay. And then uh, I'll, I'll finish it off with this question here. Um, you know, for the up-and-coming players that are trying to improve, you know, their units, their runes or whatnot, they're in the Guardian 1, trying to move to Guardian 2 whatnot, what's your recommendation to them? Let's say if they don't have, like, the perfect... Uh, you know, arena, or sorry, a Guild War defense team or whatnot, um, or maybe they don't have the perfect YOLO team or whatnot, what should you, what, what do you want to recommend to them as far as um, things that they should try or whatnot? Should they just stick with the units that bring them the most synergy, or what, what do you feel is the best best way to go? I would take a look at um, the combined defenses of your whole guild, see what's missing and what's, like, your main, your main focus is on. If everybody's having the, everybody running Theo, Vero, you should follow along and try to contribute whatever you can. Usually, you're gonna be lying on procs to take them out, but that would be my that would that would be my um, advice. Uh, <laughs> oh, like for defense? No, no, no. Is there was there anything that you would you would add as far as like the the for for people that are coming in, um, you know, a guardian one, guardian two, uh, things that they should try to incorporate when it comes to their setups? Should they? Uh, I see a lot of people out there since they if they can't make the perfect you know guild war defense, they will. Um, since they're utilizing their Guild War offense so much, you know, that's, that's the bread and butter as far as, you know, generating the wins and climbing up the ranks. Should they just try to, uh, you know, formulate like a team with their Guild War offense into, you know, to make kind of a YOLO setup? Or do you recommend going with like a, like a tanky kind of a, you know, standard Veramos, Darien, Chasun kind of thing? What, what's your style? What do you like? Uh, I thought I like elemental diversity in, in terms of Guild War defense, like having like, uh, I don't know, like a fire type, water, and wind. So, like, and, and just having a balance, I guess. I know that's really hard to do, but especially for elemental diversity, it's like you, there will be a counter to it, but then you also have, like, the um, the, the stronger end of, I don't know, whatever element, like opposing elements and stuff. So I find those really work pretty well. Um, also, just, like, runes, I guess. If you're Guardian 1, 2, you... I would assume you guys would have the the better end of the runes. Uh, I guess just I would say like bio actually changes the game so much <laughs> in terms of defense because like you're re you're relying on your AI to do well and like having bio like usually you can find usually like really good guild war defense. They're all usually on bio, um, which works like 
for certain units, like really good DPS units, I guess, like lots of Vio Theos and stuff. So I don't know, RNG like really plays into into the Guild War defense thing. So yeah. having that elemental diversity and um, just playing with like, yeah, the synergy with your monsters, having time, like the timing of it as well, I guess. If you're in Guardian 1 and 2, you'd be able to um, figure that out as well. Me, I'm not Guardian 1 or 2. I'm like, I sit at like Fighter 3 <laughs> and Conqueror. So and this is just what I, I kind of just observe from like other guild members and like, just like people that I know and just seeing what their, um, what they, what their experiences are. And yeah, I guess also like, yeah, communication, talk to other people who are in Guardian 1 and 2 and are seeing what, what works for them and then just kind of like experiment, and yep. especially for fruit removal and like, I don't know, just have fun with the game and um, just, yep. yeah. Very like cool. That. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more with the, with the violent comment. Um, I know that we've had a lot of conversations within our guild when it comes to talking about violent versus swift or violent versus despair because, you know, the despair will, will deny those turns, but the violent, the RNG factor is just, it's just ungodly, right? It just, it can never cease right. to amaze me how much it comes along. Um, looking at this team on the left, when I, the thing that sticks out to me the most is actually Orion. I've, I've been able to get my Orion around that 230 mark, but generally it doesn't compete when I'm going against people that are rocking Orion because they're, they're running the Swift. But again, you know, it's, you know, they can, they can get that first turn, but you know, if that first turn doesn't generate the kill, then they're sitting there fighting, you know, uh, to get that uh, additional proc on the first skill um, so that they can keep on going. Whereas the violent Orion seems like it never ends, <laughs> you know, it just keeps on going. It just keeps on going. So very cool. So um, next one up, Grace, I'm going to have you take a look at this. This is going to be um, Son of a Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> love the name, love the name. So I'll give you, I'll give you a, a second to go ahead and pull that uh, particular uh, person up here. But um, for those that are, are watching through the uh, video, um, rocking here, we got the Theo, um, Laika, and Chisun on the front end on the left, and then uh, we got ourselves a, a, a definitely common setup, but very, very strong indeed. Veramos, Bella, and um, share. So uh, why don't we go ahead and talk about that first particular team? Why do you feel, uh, Grace, that this one is particularly strong? Um, just the DPS factor and this Chisun on just, I don't know what it is, but like she can just spam Vio just crazy. Like right now, his um, son has defense. No one has beat his defense um, all week yet. Um, so he's mainly had like draws and successes, but I feel like his first one is strong just because um, cause of, I guess, Theo in general. But, like, also Laika um, <clears throat> just does really well as a really good DPS. And then he has still has an attack buff and then a heal. But it's, a bit, it's you have to decide who you want to take out first, uh, which I guess is really difficult, I guess, as well. <laughs> and then for his second one, I guess... A lot of people use that one as a standard um, Vero Bella uh, and uh, a DPS. With also Isher, he has, his uh, AI, I believe, got changed, I think, for his yeah. second skill. So he yes, will spam his heal more. And also, since it has a speed buff, um, Vero will be able to hit a bit harder as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I feel they're both pretty strong in terms of that balance of. Um, also, he has elemental diversity for his first one, so also yep. Theo I just re disregards elemental thing anyway. So. Yeah, and so yeah. And, and what I'll go ahead and kind of add into it because I, I know that yeah. everyone's going to be wanting, okay, you know, it's it's you know we we see it but we don't see it right because we we're looking at this and it's when we're mm -hmm. looking at teams. Um, of this strength um, and people, you know, look at it outside the box. You're like, you know, what's so special about it? What's well, what you can't see is the rune setups. Now, of course, uh, with all respect, we're going to go ahead and uh, hold the, the rune showcasing uh, so that, you know, obviously we don't give away you guys' trade secrets, but yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. beginning to think there's a, there's a little bit more into the particular team um, with regards to the, to the left side on Theo, like, and whatnot, but just understand guys, uh, if you guys didn't remember, like it does have the, uh, he does have the ability to, you know, hit anybody and not glance. So mm -hmm. that really yeah. pairs well with Theo, I believe. Um, and of course, uh, a well-ruined, uh, um, 
a rover and Leica can can one shot just about anybody with a defense break. Um, it's pretty absurd. I got a Leica myself, and he does upwards of like thirty eight to forty k on a defense broken unit with attack buff. So really yeah. strong. Um, and with regards to the uh, team on the right. Um, again, I think there's there's just something behind there that that might be missing or whatnot. But I will say this, and and I, hopefully this is not uh, his setup or whatnot. I have seen I have seen some sneaky people that kind of be deceptive when it comes to the damage. When we look at a team, um, they see a particular unit that just sticks out as far as okay, we got to watch out for that. That's going to be the damage dealer, which is this year. But I have seen people um, spec. I have seen people spec. Um, they're very most to be actually more damage based versus hit point based. You know, the the hit point leader is going to be you know bonus for a share, but the 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 very most you know sets up for damage. And 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 for me, and of course, I, I apologize if if, <laughs> if this is a strategy with that, but it kind of, it well, it kind of makes sense to me with regards to um, the ability to cast the heal on on the. On what is it uh, a shear, and obviously that swift buff is going to give very most even more damage. So, um, for yeah. those of you guys that do have these three units, that might be something to think about when playing around um, with regards to you know shifting runes or whatnot to see if you can make it do. Because even though this team looks very very bland, believe it or not, there's a lot of things you can do with it. I really like this team. So, uh, son of a bitch, I, I can't. I'm sorry, I get I get all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I get all a little flustered when I try to say that. Congratulations to you, whatever you do, um, to make this what it is today. A um, hundred bucks to somebody that gets his runes. You'll send it to me. No, no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Uh, but all right, all right. So next one up, uh, Fake Taxi. We're going to go and let you take this one. Um, we got ourselves Smiles and yeah. uh, quite the quite the setup here. Okay, so let's talk about that first one with Theo, Leo, and uh, Chasun. Um. Can't really. People will try to bring a speed team. You definitely can't bring a speed team against this round one. It negates that. I pretty much don't know what Smile's setup is, but he actually gets a lot of success out of it. I'm pretty sure a rune factor plays in a lot of it. Right, and for for those that are, um, let's say we got a couple of people not just in the top ranks, but we got a couple of people coming on board watching the series that are you know in the beginner ranks, moving up with their guild or whatnot. So can you talk a little bit about the the, the passive of Leo and how it kind of comes into play as far as breaking the the speed you know meta, so to speak? Everybody's speed will get matched to whatever is Leo's speed at the beginning of the round, which pretty negates whatever your. Bernard or Orion or Chloe speed, which are the main three speedies that people are using at the moment. And on his first attack, it will decrease your attack bar, which will give most likely his team the benefit of doubt that his team will go first and take or put a damage on you, put a hurting on your team. Gotcha. And then with regards to the person that goes after leo leo always goes first but how mm -hmm. do how does one know how does one know um who's going to be the first one to go after leo goes how does that all work it looking at your base look at the base speed if you have the units you can follow it or check in your monster collection and you have to study the monsters to know which base speeds go in order first the one with the higher base speed will go first okay and do you know if like if the if, if running a speed leader with the with the person with the highest base speed has any uh, role into that? Because I, I personally don't know. Awesome. I I, I personally don't know either. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I was kind of curious because I've seen I've seen a couple of videos put out there um, showcasing a variety of, of of Leo stuff with regards to the arena, um, and whatnot. And and even though I'll try to replicate that versus a team that I find that you know versus Leo, um, sometimes I I do get the jump on on the on the unit that I field that should have gone next and then sometimes he still has a unit with a lower base speed that somehow beats me so there's something that i'm missing i think um, there's also um if you have to check your your tower sure, sure. yeah if it's not if that that plays a role in it gotcha cool the towers the tower speed has to be max level good deal okay so we've got to make sure to get that tower maxed up and then second team over here we got ourselves veramos uh, tesarian and bella again somewhat standard but it's still getting the job done so anything you kind of wanted to add i mean i know this is a, a, a relatively standard setup here but anything unique about this in your in your opinion that just gets the job done i pretty much don't think there's a defense break there's a cleanser a healer you know, pretty much when all the standards in there when you go into a battle round right i would i would be just the only thing I would worry about is maybe it's a trap defense where he has something on despair or yep. 
They're thinking I mean, outside outside of the box. Yep, I'm and I'm going to have to agree with you there. I the, to me it seems like a trap defense because it seems too it seems too vanilla to be in the top ranks and do extremely well. So yeah. again, kind of like that setup with the in the previous one, um, showcasing Vermos, um, Bella, and uh, Sheer. I think there's something in the mix there that that the people are not seeing. So um, again, one hundred dollars to the person that figures out all the runes. Okay, just send it to me. <laughs> We'll get it. We'll get it done. We'll work it out. No, I'm just playing. Just playing. All right, here we go. So next one up, we got ourselves um, Vic Young. So Vic Young, uh, Grace, we'll go ahead and have you take the reins here as I talk about the units. We got the first team uh, for Vic. Uh, it's going to be Jewelton, Platy, and Bella, which is really unique. I love it. And then we got ourselves Veramos, um, Theo, and Chasun. So let's go ahead and hit up that first team. What you What you like about that there? Um. I don't. It's it's not standard. I guess it's yeah. one that you don't really see very often. The um, best answer ever. It's not standard. I love it. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know what it. Honestly, he he sits around um, C two C three up up upwards. I guess. Uh, so I don't know. I'm pretty sure his runes as well. So I honestly don't know why <laughs> it really works. Jilton is just. I find he's he's really strong. Uh, on Guild War defense, in terms of he can just really tank and still do damage, and um, Platy, yeah, his uh, I don't know, I don't really re would say she's a really reliable reser, but I've I've heard that she can just really hit really hard on her first, and she's like really high HP anyway, and then there's a death break as well, so um, yeah, it's not standard. I don't really know why it would really work. It's, I guess, it would just take people off guard, and it, um, it so far it's worked really well. So, gotcha. And again, uh, make sure for those people that are looking at, um, you know, setups like this, when something looks too good to be true, it, it probably it usually isn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it usually isn't. So, um, you mm -hmm. know, I, I would imagine that we got some, we got some will uh, in there. We got, we got some, some unique uh, rune setups or whatnot. So. Definitely, when 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 taking a look like we are looking at this, you know, with you guys today, uh, make sure that you're you're considering all the things that one can bring to the table. And when when I look at a, something like this, um, even though it, it might not be the case, I do believe will must be in the order because when people don't bring any kind of immunity or cleanse, um, generally they got some other kind of you know goal in mind or whatnot. So um, let's see here. And then of course this uh, second team here, a very standard team. Anything you wanted to point out there, uh, Grace, with regards to it? Um, this is, there's like a non-standard and a standard team, uh, just in general, uh, it just works really well. There's your cleanser, your DPS and, uh, healer, um, attack buffer. So, yeah, <laughs> um, there's not really much to say it. It works really well. There's a reason why a lot of people use it is, um, it, it works. So. Cool, cool. And then, uh, for the people that are, uh, watching it too, I have seen a couple of combinations out there. Um, where they kind of do the same thing they're doing now, but they'll flip Theo. They'll flip Theo with Veramos, and then they'll run like a Veramos DPS in addition to Theo. So um, yeah. it's really, really cool what people come up with. Uh, obviously, he's he's running the uh, uh, the hit point uh, leader scroll and whatnot. But, yeah, it's, 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 it's amazing what people come up with today. I love it. I love it here. So let's see. Um, we got ourselves. Uh, next one up, ah, the infamous Baz. All right. So fake <laughs> taxi, why don't you go ahead and take the reins? This this one, this one's all you, buddy. <laughs> uh, well, I recently just faced this guy in arena, and his monsters are extremely quick, and they're really versatile and really in sync with one another. Yeah, yeah, it's a, and and I think that's, I can't tell if that's Frigate or Galleon. That looks like uh, Galleon there. Yeah, that's Galleon. Okay, okay, I kind of tell there. So, yeah, pretty pretty strong yellow team, uh, definitely. You know, regardless if it's violent or swift or Ryan, it's it's fast. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be it's fast. fast. It's a, and that printer is gonna one shot you all day. So nothing, nothing really crazy to say there. Other than uh, I it's hope pretty you, much a YOLO team. Right. I hope you got some some crazy. <clears throat> I, I don't even I don't even know what I would try to bring to that to counter that if right you, now. Uh, it's hard to counter a speed team. The best thing would be a Leo, but you would just hope to outspeed it or bring a really super tanky team and cleanse it. Gotcha. Well, that actually brings me to my next point, Grace. Why don't I throw this in here while we're while we're sitting in there? When you are looking at teams that are relatively speed based teams, do you generally skip them, or do you have a your own kind of universal um, team that you like to bring to counter speed teams or whatnot? 
Um, usually speed teams, they, they combine it with like death breakers and, and usually I would bring, I, I personally would skip it and leave it to other people to try and check it. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, if, if they're, if we're down to a crunch and there's like half bases, I guess, and, and you just need to try and at least get a draw or something at least, um, I would just bring, uh, Will and Tanky, I guess. Usually those monsters, um uh they depend on going first and having that death break and everything, especially with the galleon as well it's such a strong guild ward defense uh monster <clears throat> but yeah will and uh, i honestly don't know like how like attack boosters usually i, I try and bring like a, a bird in as well uh just try to counter it but Usually, I would stay the hell away from these yeah. <laughs> and leave it to other people who can, who have like the high, who have like max speed towers and they have the runes for it. So, yep, yep, that's especially this high up. I just assume everyone has full max towers. So, <laughs> I, I would say, yeah, I would say attack to what to your best uh, skill set would be to what your what your monsters are good at. Whether your monster could take down speedy teams or tanky teams or attack to what your your, your your con, yeah, I mean, your pros are. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Very, very both valid points. And, and going back to that initial point when it comes to the will, um, extremely good point. Hopefully, everyone's taking some notes, writing this down because, um, YOLO teams, right? Any kind of wombo combo YOLO teams or whatnot, they're, they're set up in, in a way of a purpose and it has to work perfectly to do that. And if you have one or two ways of, of being able to counter whatever they're trying to do, um, if if I if, if people haven't said it enough, you know, over the course of the last you know year and a half, this game's been going, or since the wheels the wheel runes have been brought out and and started getting popularized in the meta, um, wheel runes definitely get the job done. Um, Pernas are extremely strong, but as far as you know, the RNG factor, unless he violent proc seventy two times, um, he's mm -hmm. really not going to get the damage he needs to one shot an opponent unless he has that death break in addition to his attack power. So I like that, very good. And uh, again, we got that um, team that we had from. Uh, previously, uh, with regards to Veramos, Bella, and Ashir, um, anything you want to add to that one in particular, Grace, from the previous one, or pretty much the same stuff on that one? Uh, pretty much the same, okay. <laughs> I guess. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and go to the next one, uh, and we'll do this one here. Is it Tarantadu? Yeah. Yep. Is that right? I, I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, I apologize for epic fail on my part. I already forgot <laughs> who we're on, so fake tax. We'll go ahead and let you take this one down. Uh, let's talk about that first team, Veramos, uh, the Fire Monkey King, and then we got ourselves Praha there. What do you think about that? That's a very tanky team. So his, it's pretty much a tanky team with defense breaks, so it's trying to lash you out, and hopefully his DPS wears you down in the end, one unit by one unit. Very good. Yeah. And his round two, I honestly don't know what Light Barb King does. <laughs> it's a unique one. I know I don't you don't you you don't see it that often in Guild War, but it works for him and it's hard to figure out if you don't know what his skill sets are. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And the uh the when I when I think about that light uh, barbarian king, I think about Foros and I from the proc ready gaming community. He's he uh he does a lot of streaming with regards to the Guild Wars and he loves to use his light barbarian king. It's funny because, you know, when the game came out, you know, Barbaric King, everyone kind of criticized or whatnot, but people still use it to this day. Um, I believe his third skill has the ability to stun and reduce the attack bar, essentially giving you like two turns of, of denial there. So oh, extremely, wow. extremely strong, extremely strong to say the least. And then of course, uh, that first turn, you got a, a cleanser and then you got a person that's immune to pretty much everything there with the Fire Monkey King. So yeah, definitely, definitely something to, to not overlook there. Extremely strong indeed. I like it. Uh, let's see here. So uh, we got ourselves. The uh, next one up is Jep and Grace. This is going to be you. <laughs> Believe it or not, what do you know? We got ourselves very most of sheer Bella. So obviously, guys, for those of you who are watching, there's something <laughs> sneaky about this very most of sheer Bella. Uh, yeah, buddy. All right. So obviously, we won't comment on that one here. But Grace, the 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 second team that you're seeing there is. Theo, Orion, and Chloe. So talk a little bit about that setup and, and what do you think of the pros on that one? Um, well, I see this one a lot as well. I usually see like the standard one is like Theo with Orion or Theo and like Galleon and everything. I, it, it just works pretty well because um, I don't even remember his also his spoon setups and as well. But, but really 
honestly what why his teams work really well right now because he's on the far end of the map like he's he's challenger two right now (laughs) so like he's like really a really good trap for us at the moment (laughs) um but just having that death breaker with uh with dio works so well and um and his with a really speedy chloe you can you just kind of gamble on him going first and then his Orion uh, being able to death break because you can't really rely on Theo to death break himself. So pairing Theo with a death breaker, just, I don't know, just scary. <laughs> gotcha. uh, yeah. Which works really well. Cool. And let's go ahead and, and, and I kind of want to kind of break away from, from looking at the teams right now. Let's get into a little bit of theory crafting. Um, and we'll start out with you. Uh, fake okay. taxi here. All right, we'll go. Yeah, we'll go. We'll go, Grace. Let's see if we'll see if we got. Let's see if we got this one for you. All right. So this one's going to be unique. Um, now, when I look at this particular team, right, uh, we got ourselves, uh, you know, almost like a like a hybrid of a of a you know Theo Orion combo, which is generally used uh, a lot to you know as a kind of a yolo setup with regards to uh, you know another DPS or whatnot. But we have ourselves a Chloe. So when I look at this particular team, I don't see a lot of value in stacking um, like two. Um, Swifty type of units here. So uh, obviously we're not going to be talking about uh, Jep's rune and such. But if you, if these were your units, right, um, mm-hmm. how would you go about ruining um, this particular setup? Uh, as far as like, a, would you like to do like a Swift Orion with like a Violent Chloe or vice versa? What What do you think there's like kind of the optimal way to go if they were looking at these three units? Um, for these three units, I would go with the Vile Will Chloe and a. A swift Orion, I guess. But if I do have the runes, I would still go bio, <laughs> just because uh, for just the value of having that proc and um, just it just works really well. And I know having Chloe, I think I see like so many right now, like really slow <laughs> bio Chloes. But um, and I find that they work really well, and then you can just get that proc, and she can do fanatic, and then just. I don't know. Yeah. I find that that works really well. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I, I'd have to agree with you there. Um, if, if I were to look at this, and, and again, I, I apologize because I'm, I'm not a theory crafter at all. I'm, uh, I'm nowhere near you guys' level. Um, but when I think of like the, the strength of like a, like a Swift or Ryan here, and then a, a Violent Chloe, which is always, you know, it's always getting a, a Violent unit in the 200 plus speed. Um, I feel mm. like that has to be, you know, some kind of combination there. Um, Fake Taxi, what's your take on this particular setup? What would you, what would you go about it and why? I would do actually what Grace said. I would do a violent will Chloe and a swift, just to a swift, uh, whatever you could, if possible, a swift focus because you want the accuracy to land. Cool. But, cool. but you want your fastest moves on them so you could speed up the attack boost on your units. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm. And do you think, um, do you think it would make sense to, I mean, because I, I have seen uh, people get get Theos in that, you know, plus 80, plus 90, um, and, and just a handful of people that have, have kind of gone with a speed crit damage attack to go um, with this. Would you still go that particular route on, on like a speedy kind of a setup with regards to Theo? Or in this particular combination, do you feel um, a slow Theo is the way to go? If you have a fast Chloe, I would, you, you're fine with a clo, uh, slow Theo, but if you want your team to synchronize with after the attack boost on the Orion, it's best if you go with a fast fast Theo, just in case of the other person's monsters. Um, close before your Theo, you really kind of ruin the defense break on what the Orion has placed on them. Good deal. Love that. Love it. All right. And I think that is it. Yep. That is our last one here. So um, thank you again for... Uh, giving us an opportunity to look at all these particular stuff here. Um, I wanted to go ahead and throw out a question to both of you, you know, some fun questions or whatnot. Um, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, um, how do I say this? There's a lot of things that have come along the way with regards to Guild Wars, um, the changes and whatnot uh, with regards to it for the approval. Um, we do have a very uh, great group over there, the Comptos community, that do watch these videos and, and take some of the feedback that you guys give um, when, when, when commenting on this particular thing. So with what you've seen in the Guild Wars today, and we'll go ahead and start with uh, Fake Taxi this time, um, if there was one thing to change about Guild Wars, okay, what would it be and why? I hate how you can get attacked by so many different guilds on any certain given day where you can be attacked by four different guilds or three. It's hard to recover from that when you're only allowed to be in one guild at a certain time. 
Yeah. That's what it, they should actually put a cap limit on how much you should be atta- get allowed to be attacked by. Gotcha. It's, it's funny that you mentioned that because uh, I think it was what's today? Say Tuesday? What, what's today that we're recording this? Fail. Uh, I already forgot what day is it. Friday. Friday. Oh my god, <laughs> no, dude! I'm horrible. I'm so horrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so the first day, I think it was Monday, that we came on board and we got you know the the reset or whatnot. We got attacked seven times within. Two hours, so, yeah, something that, ridiculous like that. Yeah, I'm like, are you too, kidding me? Like, hard, yeah, it's too hard to recover from that. How do you how do you do that? And of course, it wasn't like these you know random average Joes, right? Where you got the top top ten, top twenty people hitting us all up. I'm like, come on, man, that's crazy, that's crazy. So, um, yeah, I can definitely attest to that. Uh, Grace, how about you? If there was one thing to change, what would it be and why? It would be that <laughs> the exact same thing. Because I know, like, especially on, on, on tally days, for, especially for those who are rushing, like, um, those who get Legend Guild, it, it really depends on how many times you get attacked that day as well. Because I know that the, the week that we did get Legend was we only got attacked once, I believe, I think, that whole day. And so that really helped us um, go up um, to get legend so like even if you if you're trying to rank like it really does depend on guild war rng and seeing if you're going to be attacked by like one or like eight different guilds on that one day and that will really affect how you um on your standing and and also getting how many summoning stones you get at the end so it can it can really like screw you over or it can really benefit you if it's i don't know it it doesn't it it's one thing that kind of annoys me about Guild War right now. So, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. And what are you guys' uh, take on the um, the points uh, that is needed to uh, build the towers? What's your thoughts on that? Because I, I know, for, like, me personally, oh, like, it's... It's ridiculously high. It's, yeah. it's high. It's high. But it's, it's it goes back at, like, for me, I, I can... I think it's high with you, and I agree with you, but it's like, do we want to give everybody out there, you know, the top guild tower within a, within a month. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I wish nice. they could find some balance, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, that would be great if, I, if, if they could, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, guild tags are so expensive. <laughs> yeah, they are. So. They are indeed. All right. So let me see. Um, let's get into a fun question. For those that have been following the channel for quite some time, you know that I've created the Epic Fail community where we've embraced uh, every single failure uh, that comes in our and it comes in our way, and we just learn from that, you know, in an effort to progress forward. So um, let's go ahead and get. Uh, we'll start with Grace this time. Uh, sure. What has been your biggest Epic Fail in the game today? Oh, <laughs> to date, to date, yeah. Doesn't have to be to- today, but like since you've been playing. <laughs> since. Uh, honestly, I've had too many, so I I can't really pinpoint which one is my biggest epic fail. <laughs> um, I don't know actually. I think I would just go back to like the beating the one stars to Rainbow Mon to try and yeah. level them up, and that yeah. was the slowest progression ever. <laughs> right. I guess. Yeah, that'd be a good one. What about you, Fake? <laughs> uh, my biggest epic fail was. Probably getting rid of a lot of four stars that I thought were bad, and a week later they will come out with a patch that they buffed them, and you kind of regret feeding them just to make a quick six star. Mm-hmm. So my advice would be always save one four star of of a kind because you don't know whatever patch or upgrade buff or nerf they're gonna come out with the next week. Gotcha. And you make a valid point there. Is talking about just some you know random tips of advice that you've kind of learned along the way. Um, do either of you um, have? Uh, you know, with the, with the, and this is out of respect to forget Guild Wars, forget you know Arena, just the game in general. Uh, if there's if, if there's something that you wanted to put out there, like a last word uh, for all the beginners and intermediates coming up, that you know, for you guys, you've been playing for quite some time. We all made mistakes. Um, if there was something that you could, you know, pay it forward and teach them, make sure that they don't do that when they're coming up, so that they can enjoy the game better. Uh, Grace, what would that be for you, and why? Um, <clears throat> I guess. <laughs> a chat I guess there's so many trolls in chat especially if you're like beginner it's it's hard to filter out who, who's serious or who's not so like honestly I would just say don't take everybody so seriously in chat um, especially if you're beginning and you're looking for advice and asking for tips and whatnot um, I'd really just actually just find someone who you, who you can rely on who actually plays the game well and um, like there's on the, online I guess 
um, there's a huge, huge community of people who can actually really help you instead of in game. <laughs> Cause you see so many trolls and I know like some, uh, like back when I was noob and then like I listened to random people and then it wasn't really good and it didn't really help me at all. So um, as well, I guess, besides that, the whole chat aspect, um, it'd be like just prioritize, I guess, your giants and dragons teams. Um, I think I think it was easier before Necro Dungeon came out because you could get your rage runes and everything and all in just yeah. two dungeons. But yeah, for right now, I guess uh, you can get, like um, yeah, focus on building teams instead of just building one monster. Um, I know there's like, the typical build your farming monster, then your support and stuff. But also just consider building teams instead of a single um, mon that you're going to rely that you want to rely on because there's no really any one. T- they they all work together in a team, and that really helps you progress better in the game. Gotcha. So, cool. And yeah. and thank you for like even though it was you know some of the comments that we've we've provided through your uh, through the streaming or, or through the videos or whatnot they seem kind of you know repetitive or whatnot. It's always a, it's always a blessing to hear that time and time and again because for me when I when I watch these videos or when I see other videos that people say the same thing over and over that that kind of you know puts a light bulb in my head that says hey I, I might want to do what they're what they're talking about. And believe it or not, there's so many people that we get um, sending messages that have not seen any of the previous Educate and Dominate videos and then they'll they'll see your so I appreciate you just giving some kind of uh, feedback on that. Um, Taxi, how about you, my man? Do you have anything last-minute points that you want to throw out to some of those beginner and intermediate people coming up? Um, pretty much just stay at it. Don't get frustrated when you save up 50 Mystic Scrolls and all you get is three-star and you feel yeah. like race quitting. Yeah. Just, just keep at it because yeah. you know what? There's people out there that actually use only three stars and four star monsters and are in G three. So it does, you don't need a nat five to just to complete your all the way up there. I would take uh, runes over a nat five any day. Give me a legendary nat five. I mean, le- a legendary rune over a nat five. I'd be happy. Yeah. Oh man, I, you could have just said it, Bora. We got a we got a member in our guild um, named Ija Nighty. Um, he's been with our guild for quite a long time, and you know, just until recently. Um, he, he, we did a summoning session for him and we pulled the Camilla for him, but before that he did not have a nat five and he was able to progress through all the PVE content, PVE, do well in the arena and the guild wars, be one of our top players in addition to clearing, um, trial of ascension normal and hard without the use of any kind of nat five with respect to, um, you know, Veramos, of course, um, like yeah. an actual nat five. So uh, anything can happen guys. You just, you just put the work into it. You could definitely get the job done. So yeah, they wouldn't make a game where you only, you, you only could beat the game with nat fives. Or they wouldn't be making any money at all. <laughs> yeah, that just becomes a collection, a Pokemon collection type of game. Yeah, let me see here. So, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh uh, no, I was just gonna say, just think outside of the box with your runes. Come up with people that you would never expect. Good deal. All right. And so, uh, do you actually? We'll start with Grace. Do you guys have any um, shout outs that you want to kind of give out there to the community before we end the video? Um, shout outs, <laughs> uh, like just to our whole Inked family, I guess. It's, it's been a huge journey since from the beginning to where we were struggling to get people into the guild and then to where we are now. And it's, it's been a lot of fun and we've had a lot of laughs and um, a lot of late nights and singing and stuff. So it's, it's been a lot of fun um, with our Inked family and as well, I guess, shout outs to, I guess, our fellow guilds. I guess uh, like with Shadowbar and Shogun as well. I think Jimmy, um, we both agreed they were really they were awesome guilds to be um, friends with and stuff. So, yeah, and Channel One Twenty, of course. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. All right, and how about you, uh, Taxi? Um, very much what she said it to my Ink family. I mean, it's the people that actually keep me in the game, not the game itself, because I actually got bored of the game, but. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, you gotta make like the, the Gil family that I'm in. I kind of relate to them. We we go ups and downs, and we rage on each other. We express our feelings where we're gonna get frustrated with each other, but next day we get over it and move on. It's pretty much you build a friendship with, with your guild. Mm-hmm. So I would like to give a shout out to my Ink family that's always been there and our sub guild Infamous. Oh and, yeah. <laughs> oh man, we always forgot about Infamous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fail, fail. <laughs> yeah, they're <our> sub guild, <clears throat> so gotta give a shout out yeah. to them. Oh, they've man. been with they've been with me for a long time since I've been with the guild as well, so they're they're holding it down there. 
And like she said, the two guilds that we get are really along with is Shogun and uh, Shadow Bar. So Good they're, they're, they're both great guilds, and they're always out there to help. Good deal. And so, and since you're uh, able to... Saints, too. Yeah, yeah. Kindred Saints, yeah. We're, he's looking at, <laughs> he's looking at, we're looking at Kindred Saints right here. Yeah, that, that's a shout-out to you, Mal. You get a personal one. Yeah, yeah we, we have to give a quick shout-out to Mal since he, he's, he's been he's a very... <laughs> yeah, he was the one that got it, all of us connected and whatnot. But he's 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 a stellar guy to say the least. Yeah. Definitely a great guy. Now, um, Taxi, since you can see the the screen that I'm looking at here, um, mm -hmm. the last thing I'd love to finish out with a video um, is a call out kind of a video. So what I would like to do is give you the opportunity to take a look at some of the people that you've seen at the top ten ranks um, that you would want to see on board for a future educate and dominate. Now, with regards to um, the guilds that we've done, I'll kind of throw it out there. Um, we're, we're looking to speak with Oblivion. We've already done Kindred Saints, Shoguns, Pinnacles, um, Shadowvar, Malicious. Um, we've done a couple of those guilds. Is there anybody out there that you have, you guys have played and you're like, wow, they're, they're, their setups are extremely unique. Um, seems like they're very knowledgeable. Um, you know, what would be your recommendation to have them on board for a future video? Uh, my vote will go out to Apollon. Okay. Yeah, they're strong guilt, and also Show those two. Okay. Yep. Yep. And we we have had Show, so maybe what we'll try to go ahead and well, okay. reach out. We'll we'll try to reach out to Apollon, see if it is. So, um, and do you, uh, with regards to Apollon, do you have anybody within the guild, the uh, guild leaders, whatnot, that you speak with personally or whatnot? I know Alice Bo Alice Hart Booty's in there. Okay. And Te Tebby Buns. <laughs> All right. So either one of you two, why don't you go ahead and get in touch with Taxi and then he can connect you with me um, so that we can talk in the future as far as getting you on board. But again, um, thank you guys so much uh, for coming on and bringing this in. This was so cool to have not one but two people um, on the Educate Nominate. This is definitely the first of many that we'll go ahead and do. So I appreciate you guys taking the time and effort to come out on such short notice. No problem. Yeah, no worries. Glad to be here. Yeah. All righty. Well, thank you guys all for tuning in. It's a pleasure to make these videos for you. As always, it's your boy Childish, Fake Taxi, and Grace with Childish Plays checking out. Take care, and we will see you next time, guys. We're out. Bye, guys.